All right, in this video, we're going to do the three easy ones, linear, cubic, and cube root. And I'm going to do examples of each one so that you can see, okay? So a linear function is like this, f of x is equal to negative 3x plus 5, okay? So, you know, it's basically, it's mx plus b form. It can also be like negative 3 over 2 times x plus 5, okay? So what we have is we have an x being multiplied by a number. The x is to the first power, and then we might have something added or subtracted. Okay? Another example of a linear is f of x equals x. That's a linear function. f of x equals 2 thirds x, also a linear function. And here's the thing. With linear functions, you can plug in any number. There's no restriction. There's no number that you can plug in here that would break the rules of, of multiplication, addition, and, and division, and subtraction, okay? You can plug anything in, and you can get an answer that's anything. Can I get negative 5 million as the answer? Yeah, if we put in a really big number like, you know, like, I don't know, 1.5 million or 2 million. 2 million times negative 3 is negative 6 million. Negative 6 million plus 5 is negative 5 million. 999,995, okay? So we can plug in really big numbers and we can get out really small numbers. Can I put in zero? Yep. Negative three times zero is zero plus five is five. So we can get five as an answer. We can plug in a zero. So we can plug in a zero. We can plug in positive numbers. Can I plug in really negative numbers? Yeah. Negative 10 billion times negative three is positive 30 billion. So I can get an answer that's a really big number and I can plug in numbers that are really negative. So linear functions, you can plug in anything, so the domain is always, always negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range of a linear function is always negative infinity to positive infinity, okay? Now let's do cubic. Now I just want to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spoil everything here. I just want you to know that the domain is the same. It's negative infinity to positive infinity, and the range is the same, negative infinity to positive infinity. And so a cubic function might look something like this. f of x is equal to, let's say, a, a, a binomial 2x minus 3 cubed. It'll have a cube on it. It might also look something like this. f of x is equal to x cubed plus something else. If it starts with an x cubed or if it's a, a in parentheses and it's like a linear, this is linear, x to the first power, but it's cubed on the outside. These are both cubic functions. Well, you can plug anything into this. You can plug in positives, negatives. You can plug in zero, okay? Um, you can even get zero as an answer, and you can even get negatives and positives as an answer. For example, if I put in negative 10 here, I'll have negative 20 minus 3 is negative 23. Negative 23 times negative 23, that's a positive, but then I multiply by negative 23 again, I get these two make a positive, then multiply by a negative, and I get a negative again. So this can be a negative. If they're all positives, 23 times 23 times 23, it, then it winds up being positive. So we can get positive answers, we can get negative answers, we can get zero as an answer. And therefore, cubic functions have all real numbers or negative infinity to positive infinity. Cube roots are exactly the same way. Negative infinity to positive infinity, negative infinity to positive infinity, okay? And so th this is what a cube root looks like. If I say f of x is equal to the, there's a 3 here, and then what looks like a square root symbol, a radical, but this is actually called the cube root. So if there's a 3 in here, let's, uh, so let's say it's the cube root, well, let's make it simple, the cube root of x, okay? Well, can I take the cube root of a negative number? Sure. For example, we can take the cube root of uh, negative 27, Cube root of negative 27, what we're looking for is a number that's multiplied by itself three times. That's what cube root means, okay? Just a quick example. If We know that 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 8. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8, right? So the cube root of 8 is equal to 2, okay? It's whatever number is multiplied. This number is a number that was multiplied by itself three times, Okay? And so look, we have a positive number as an output. We have a positive number as an input. We can even put in, you know, 8 million and get like, you know, 20,000 or something as the answer, okay? Or 2,000, whatever. 
Uh, so the cube root of negative 27 is actually negative 3, okay? Because negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. See, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9, but positive 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. So unlike square roots, where you can't take the square root of a negative number, you can take the, the cube root of a negative number. And so cube roots, you can put in negatives, you can put in positives, you can even put in zero. The cube root of zero is zero. So, and the square root of zero is zero also. When you put in a negative for the cube root, you get an answer that's a negative. When you put in a positive for the cube root, you get an answer that's positive. And so cube roots have a domain of negative infinity to positive infinity and a range of negative infinity to positive infinity.